back to the previous, um, or reference the previous diagram, if this was the corner pier of that house and we maybe had a porch on the front, we're looking for the soil pressure, the ability of the soil to push back to keep the building in a static situation. You understand what I'm saying? Equal forces. So this soil pressure is, is, a, is a big, big component of what we're trying to, to monitor. And that gets optimized with proper soil, proper moisture, and proper compaction. Those are the bigger elements that go into it. So with that, I'm going to ask the contractors, how do you prep the ground soil when you're fixing to put up a building? What do you do? Feedback. Come on. Well, you compact it a little bit, but then you got a lot of loose dirt in there from the digging. The digging leaves a lot of loose dirt. But if it's post tension, you go extra deep. How do you compact it? How do you compact it? They got different ways. I mean, you can pay the money and have a tractor with a, with a, with a roller, or you can have the diggers out there with a machine like a jackhammer. It goes that way. Yeah. Oh, I would agree. Anybody else? Sheep's foot. Good word. Well, I didn't hear what he said. Sheep's foot. He said use, using a sheep's foot. Okay. I would suggest that in general, the building community needs to put more emphasis on getting the compaction right. Now, the soil type matters as well. If, you, if you're clearing a lot, trees and so forth, Simply cutting the tree and pulling the root ball out, throwing some dirt in there and rolling over it with a, perhaps a bulldozer is not, not the ideal circumstance. I mean, bulldozers are made to sit on top of dirt. What we want is sheep's foot or something along those lines compacting that dirt. It matters. And not just the top foot. If, you, if, if the dirt is processed correctly, you can really, really get it to lock up and give you a deeper, deeper strata for compaction. And that's what's good. Now the diggers have to come in and dig their trenches. I get that in the area. But that compaction is critical because that is the element in this whole process, in this whole assembly, that's going to be pushing back up, holding up the building. If not, we're going to get differential settlement. Which, cre which creates unevenness throughout the building. Yes, sir? The soil compaction test that we have to do in the permit, how accurate or how valuable is that? Because basically all they're doing is taking samples, taking moisture readings, but they're not actually testing to see how well the soil has been compacted by the subcontractor. <clears throat> well, I would just want to make sure I understand the circuit. They come, uh, does, a test, does a testing lab come out to the site, get a sample, and run a test on it? Right. Okay. They do that at every one foot test. Okay. They, it, it, it would be my understanding that they would come out initially, get a sample of the dirt, which is the, in simple terms, the type of dirt. It has a particular moisture content and, and some engineering properties associated with that dirt. They take it to a lab, they analyze it, and they will present to you a report on that dirt saying that there's an optimum moisture content to give you the optimum strengths of that strata once it's in place. Now that's just a test sample. Now you're gonna come in, you're gonna start building layers upon layer. Right? And that's when the field testing occurs. The test that occurs in the field is to compare to the initial test that they took, which is called a proctor. That's what establishes your optimum moisture. So what they, generally speaking, let's say the optimum moisture, I'm just using loose words, but let's say it's 17%. Generally speaking, they want you within 95% of that 17% of moisture. So on a, on a bell curve that comes up, let, let, on a bell curve that comes up this way, here's your optimum moisture at the top of the curve. They want just 
through here. They want your moisture content in each one of those layers that you install, they want it within that moisture content. Is, did I answer your question or what? Basically, they're saying that they're doing their crop digest and they're finding out is it the correct kind of soil and is that the correct moisture level? I had somewhere we got moisture above what their recommendations were, and we got to mitigate that out. That's correct. But that still doesn't answer my question from them. Who is them? The, uh, the engineering companies, um, the one out of the valley. Okay. Yes. Doing. Yes. And whether or not that soil has been placed in the past is correct. They're telling us the soil is the right kind, has the right moisture, but no one ever in my watching them do their thing ever go and dump something down there and see. They should. Okay. Okay. So, so they should, and it can happen very quickly. There's instrumentation that can test those layers, so they can literally be on site and gone probably within a half hour. Just, just to be fair to the circumstance, I don't, quite possibly, you know. And I'm not defending one way or the other. I'm just saying that that those tests, they, they, they'll go in with the instrument, the, they have a little procedure they use, press the buttons, they get a reading, and they're off. And, and the reports are, should be generated. The reports should be generated and sent to you, or you certainly on time. Yeah. Yes, I would think so. Yeah, right. Here, with regard to this discussion, um, I would be cautious as a builder if, if a homeowner said, here's my set of house plans and there's my dirt pile. I've been surcharging that land for two years. We stacked up that dirt and that's it and we're letting it compact. I'd be cautious about just accepting that compaction circumstance. All right, because we need to go through the process you and I just spoke of. I've had one, the homeowner got dirt from sugar mill and so I did that. Yeah. And we literally scraped that off and started a new. Correct. Because it's soft and back and people just step on that. Yeah, and the type of dirt again. I know it's kind of a funny discussion, but it matters. So, yes, sir. Well, I guess I'm a little challenged. Let's just say this table was you, your lot, and it's been compacted with the big equipment, the sheet. You set your form on it, you put your plumbing in it, they start digging, and you got loose dirt in there, you're not going to get no sheets in there, and you better know who's operating the jackhammer because you got plumbing in there now. So, how else are you going to compact it? Well, that's a good question. It's an excellent question. I would suggest, based on the initial premise that you shared that the dirt the sheep foot com compacted the initial in situ circumstance is that the premise i would say then there's incorrect approach because the additional dirt should have been brought on top and then you dig back down you don't start on the top that's that's what i would think because if you're bringing dirt inside your form to get it compacted I'm just, I'm a little leery of that. I don't know how you get that accomplished. Ah, uh, but rain come back. Yeah, well, and then I'm okay with that if it occurs in that fashion, as long as we get the testing. As long as the testing is there. And really, I don't want to dismiss the aspect of the slab in compaction right here. This is where the meat and potatoes of everything happens right here you understand because that's where the primary loads are coming through back on the previous slide this is where the loads are coming through so this is where the I hate to use the term majority but this is where the more important compaction requirements need to be here as opposed to here all right i drew this arrow in 
smaller than these because we don't we don't have as much load coming in here. You've got dead load and live load from your floor. Picture that as an open living room or dining room or what have you. You don't have any roof loads coming through this one here. Can you, can you understand what I'm trying to share? So the compaction is going to be more important here than it is here. But I don't want to dismiss that part of it. So there is some thought, I guess back to your, your statement, there's some thought that needs to be given as to, as to how that whole construction sequence needs to take place. In other words, where the grade beam is, you know, dig it deeper, dig compacted soil, and the concrete goes right on compacted soil. In the middle, you compact as best you can on the flats. Under, under the pr premise that you've presented. However, what does code say? And I'm not always in support of this, but this is what the code says. Under that premise, you've got to go down at least one foot into, into existing soil. Correct. So, it's, it's tricky, but it seems like to get the compacted soil on the inside of the building parameter, you got to get it in there first, get it compacted, and dig down on your trenches. 